John here guys and today we're talking about the Emacs Tiny Hawk Freestyle 2. This is Emacs very small freestyle solution for all of you beginner to expert pilots out there that want something small with an incredible power to weight ratio. Now I must admit I do pretty much get a hold of every Emacs release that ever comes out but the original one of these just didn't grab me for some reason. I really didn't see much reason to try the original versus something like a Diatone Cube, which is my favorite um, 65 millimeter or two and a half quad ever. But this one made enough improvements to where I thought this is worth checking out. Now it has a very similar power system to the original. So if you have one of those, um, you already know what to expect. It's um, Emacs' 1103. 7,000 kV motor that you're going to run on 2S. They've upgraded the camera system with uh, a new camera holder out there to be able to accommodate a 14 millimeter nano camera and they're using the Runcam Nano 2. That is the standard for a lot of these. It's a very affordable, great camera option that keeps the price of these bind and flies down. They are using the double, what is it, like JST Micro the double sort of whoop style battery connector at the back. Uh, I have mixed feelings about that. If you fly a lot of Emacs products already and you have a lot of those batteries, it comes with two, um, then this is a great option to be able to fly. I do like that you can plug the charger that comes in with this into a USB battery pack and charge six of these batteries at once. So if you had a number of them, it would be a really cool option to keep flying almost forever. It has a video transmitter on board that goes up to 200 milliwatts. That is a big improvement for the original. And it has Emacs's little five amp, I believe it's a five amp ESC flight controller stack combo. Um, they are direct soldering these onto the board instead of using the connectors. That's because that will allow you to get a little bit more power to those motors uh, without going through that connector there. The connectors still are on there though. Um, I mean, that's probably not that much weight, but they didn't bother to take them off. They did include a tiny little cap in there that I'll show you a close up of. That's kind of nice uh, to be able to get clean footage. And here's the thing that I'm going to have to tell you about. Here's the elephant in a room. <laughs> Emacs is still using this damn SPI integrated receiver. Now, now on something like the Tiny Hawk 2 that you're likely to be flying majority of the time indoors, that receiver system works perfectly fine for this. But for the Tiny Hawk 2 that has more power, more thrust, you're gonna want more range. They upgraded the video transmitter to be able to get you a longer video system signal but they did not upgrade the receiver system. So what does that mean? That means as soon as you get 20 to 30 yards away, you're gonna have your radio barking at you with low telemetry warnings. And if you push much further beyond that, you're just gonna drop out of the sky from a fail safe. This is completely unacceptable in 2020. Emacs, why are you still including this? Ugh. And it's very frustrating because we already know that Emacs has a very tiny D8 uh, FR Sky compatible receiver. They use it on the Emacs uh, Baby Hawk R4 inch. And that would like add what, like a gram, maybe half a gram to this. And that would give you a beautiful usable amount of range. And they neglected to do that for whatever reason. And that makes this kind of like, who is this for? Who is this for? Um, is it for newcomers? I mean, it really has a... It comes with Emacs's standard, very, very nice carrying case. Inside you'll find a variety of goodies. This six port charger that plugs into USB, actually this is a really welcome and awesome feature. It comes with a pair of these Emacs 450 milliamp one cell battery that you plug into both sides of that connector in order to get 2S power. It comes with this tiny little bag of spare hardware, screws, standoffs, etc. 
a spare set of these Emacs Avan two and a half inch props. These Emacs uh, two and a half inch Avan props, look at the pitch on them. They're so steep. That means that as soon as you match on that throttle, you are going sailing up. This has an incredible top mounted freestyle feel. I mean, it just feels so fun to fly. So when you get barely away from yourself and you're already getting barked at by those receiver warnings, it's so frustrating. Now, to their credit, Emacs did leave a number of pads on the bottom that should allow you to upgrade to just about any receiver system. They also left some on the side that will allow you to put up an S-Bus receiver uh, any kind of far sky right there, even the one I just mentioned. But the bummer is like it didn't come in the box. So is this supposed to be for beginners or are you supposed to have to add your own receiver on it? If so, like why even give you this other antenna? Just drop the price by a couple of bucks and call it a plug and play and let you, you know, provide your own. Uh, what I would really like is to have a crossfire on here with a mini modal T, but that's going to add about 30 bucks to this combination. And now you're talking about $150 instead of 120, uh, probably better off just adding an FR sky, which will give you the range that you need. You don't need to be flying this, you know, too far away, but you do want enough for freestyle fun. And that's exactly what this has. It's such a special combination. I really just wish they would have given you a better receiver option out of the box. The um, video transmitter antenna is sort of zip tied and mounted straight up. It looks like a little snorkel sticking out there. But like I said on the FPV sales alerts group, when I posted this, do not try to fly it into <laughs> the water for any reason. That would be a bad idea. This is available for $120 for the quad itself or $180 for Emacs' ready to fly combo. That will give you the Emacs goggles and the Emacs radio that we've seen on the channel. Those are actually pretty good options. I think in 2020 though, the best um, cheap radio is gonna be the Beta FPV one. The go Emacs goggles are perfectly fine. Um, Beta FPV does have their $200 option, but that's more of an indoor quad. This one is really special for outdoors. I, uh, so what do I think? Can I recommend this and who is this for? If you don't mind swapping out your own receiver, go ahead and do it. It's too powerful to fly indoors. The receiver is too weak out of the box to fly outdoors and have much fun unless you just want to stay in your driveway only. The video transmitter does come locked and I had a few issues with it going into pit mode randomly. Uh, which pit mode is like transmitting like one milliwatt. So it looks fine when it's right next to you But as soon as you get about 10 or 15 feet away the picture totally goes out and you just kind of fall out of the air um, That's a special note anybody anytime you're flying a new piece of equipment that you have built or bought Gentlemen, that's not acceptable Always fight very slowly and very low to the ground and over grass so I had those issues with video signal cut out, but I was only about two feet away from the ground and it caused no issues, not even a scratch on it. So the answer to that is to unlock the video transmitter. And the way that you do that is you hold the button on there as you are plugging the power in. That's a little fiddly because this does have the dual um, battery connectors. Now, if you have a bunch of 2S batteries, fear not, you can chop this and put an XT30 and then fly it that way. That's totally fine as well. Um, since I have accumulated a number of these Emacs batteries though, I think I will leave this in this configuration here. Given that it's the same price, even a few years old now, would I choose this over the Diatone 229? That's a tough one. For me personally, more of a racer, I do enjoy the bottom battery mount feel of the Cube 229. But if you are more of a freestyle person and you want to not mess up your freestyle muscle memory and you want to be able to fly like you would a larger craft, but on a smaller scale, this is the option for you. Save a couple of bucks to swap out the receiver and you'll be plenty good to go. What do you think in the comments, guys? What is your choice for micro freestyle from your driveway, from your park, from your playground, wherever you might go outside? Let me know in the comments what your choice is for 2020. Thanks, guys.